Welcome everyone to another NASCAR Heat Evolution gameplay video. In this particular video, we're going to be looking at tires. In previous videos, we've looked at everything from shocks and springs to weight bias and gears and so on. Today, we're going to be looking at tires. And in this video, we're going to focus on tire pressures, which are seen in the tire settings window. And under miscellaneous settings, we're going to be looking at left front and right front camber. So let's start with tire pressures. In general, what you would want is to have your tire pressures indicate that the, the tire is receiving equal traction across the inside, middle, and outside of the tire. Okay, and the way you do that is you set your tire pressures here, then you get out on the track, and you use the menus to show the tire temperatures as we've done in previous videos. And essentially you would look to see if your tire temperature for the inside part of the tire, the middle and then the outside part of the tire are fairly close to one another. So that's one way of doing it. Now I can tell you that unfortunately in this game that doesn't seem to mean a whole lot. So let's take a look at some options that we have with our tires. Right now we're using 26 and a half pounds on both of the left side tires, left front and left rear. And the right side tire, the right front has 34 pounds and the right rear has 31 and a half pounds. What I have found to be the most crucial part of this is the relationship of these tires with one another. In other words, the, the relationship of the right front to the right rear, the relationship of the left rear to the left front tire. In this case, both left side tires are equal, so that makes things easy on, on that front. But the right side tire, you notice that the right front is two and a half pounds more than the right rear. Okay, so that would be something very important to keep in mind because as you start changing tire pressures back and forth, keep in mind its relationship, not necessarily the 34 pounds, but its relationship to the right rear. Okay, so we're going to start out with this configuration, and let's take a look and see what happens. I'm going to bring up the car status menu, try to make my way onto the track here. All right, right now the tires you can see, as well as being 100% wear on all of them, we're starting out at low temperature. And in general, that means less grip. So we're going to run a, a couple of laps here, and we're just going to see how the car feels. Okay, right now I can tell you that the setup that I've been working on for this particular video as well as some future videos that I have planned. The car is very stable. All right, I can basically take the car wherever I want to from right on the bottom to running in the second or even third groove if need be. But the main thing for me is how does the car feel going through the corners? Also, we're gonna keep an eye on those tire temperatures. Right now we're, looks like 160, we're in the 160s, 170s for the right front, we're in the 180s for the right rear. So you can see that we're driving this car off the right rear. The car is very free in general. You can also see that the left front has about five or so degrees over the left rear. And is he going to give me any room? He gives me just enough. Okay. That's all I needed. So, car is very stable to me. I could drive this all day long. You know, regardless of the lap times, which obviously are extremely important. But right now, I'm in too much traffic to really be able to get down on the bottom and run some very aggressive laps. So, But the car... And of course, he would run me flat over coming off. Love the AI. 
All right, so you can see where the temperatures are. We're at about 180 or so for the right front, about 190 or roughly 10 degrees more on the right rear. Okay, so let's do something drastic. Let's go to max pressure. Now, max, max pressure for the right side tires is 50 PSI. So we're going to run that. Now, remember, the important part about the pressure is the relationship to the two right sides to each other. So we're going 50 here. We were two and a half pounds less on the right rear, so we're going to keep that the same as we increase the pressures. Now I'm going to leave the left sides alone until I see reason to change them. Okay, so now we're at 50 pounds on the right front, 47 and a half on the right rear. Let's run some more laps. We're looking for two things in particular. And again, I'm going to do something, you know, entirely not intelligent and just run straight out on the track. But the thing you want to keep in mind is there are two real barometers here for whether or not your particular setup change, regardless of what it is, is working. Number one is how does it make the car feel? How does it change the handling of the car? as it feels. The second thing, of course, is the stopwatch. Does it make your car faster or slower? Because there'll be sometimes that you'll make a change that will actually make the car feel quite a bit better. It's more stable, it, it turns great, but it feels great as well, but it's slower. So you have to keep that in mind. Maybe that's okay for you based on what you're looking for, but just keep in mind that you did indeed make the car slower by doing so. All right, we're also again, in addition to the stopwatch, we're gonna pay attention to our tire temperatures. And already the tire temperatures are running hotter than they were before. So increasing the tire pressures did have a change. You may have already noticed that this car is skating around more. The car in and of itself is looser, but more so than just being loose, the car is skating, meaning that I feel like I have less grip. Now, because I'm not necessarily focused on and can't control all the variables for lap time here because we're two or three wide in some cases, as I'm going around the track and it's hard to keep a keep a handle on how many cars you're around. I can tell you that I was running laps before making this video. And the lap times are very close, regardless of what pressures you put in these tires. But you can notice that the temperature is much higher, running higher pressures. Now, if you'll also notice that the reason why the pressure or the temperature rather is higher is because basically what we've done is we've massively over inflated the tires and so it's the middle of the tire that's massively overflated and thus we're seeing much higher uh, temperatures than we would normally see if the car was if the the tire was properly inflated but the good thing is the game doesn't seem to really care as far as grip levels go. I, I definitely feel like there is more grip with running the previous settings, which were 34 pounds in the right front and 31 and a half in the right rear. But my lap times don't seem to be showing that there is any loss of grip. All right, so we've seen, I mean, you're looking at nearly 210 on the right front. It looks like somewhere around 220, 225 in the right rear actually a little higher than that so much higher temperatures but if I come back over and look at my lap times I'm easily down into the twos and I haven't even honestly been paying that much attention to the line I've been running I've been spending most of my time looking at the temperatures so a little earlier I was e easily able to get down into the 29 ones regardless of what the tire pressure was. So in this case, I would recommend that you use the tire pressure simply as a guide to how you want the car to feel.
And don't worry really at all about the grip level and the lap time because they're going to be there regardless. It's all about the feel you like. If you like the car to feel more on edge, if that's a feel that you're looking for, then I would recommend higher tire pressures because it will definitely give you that feeling as opposed to the lower tire pressures. However, as of yet, I've seen no reason to raise or lower them very much as far as an effect on lap time. Now you can see here, I've been had some fairly clear track the last couple of laps and I've been able to get down close to a 29 flat here. But, and of course that's gonna go away because Clinton Boyer is now solidly in the way and you can see the car got loose right there. That's the kind of thing that you'll deal with a lot more with higher pressures. Again, because you're running basically on the center part of the tire rather than using the full tire. It's just that the game doesn't generally translate that very much into a change of grip, it doesn't seem. Or at least not to the extent that I would expect it to. All right, let's... So with that in mind, as a general rule, uh, particularly for a mile and a half track, I would look at tire pressures and say, in general, I would run... Uh, now, I'm not going to mess with the left side tire pressures because uh, one of the things I want to keep is kind of tire stagger. And by that, what I mean is by running more pressure in the right sides, I create a situation where the right side is slightly higher than the left side, which has less air pressure in it. So it, that part of the uh, tire pressure game helps the car turn as well, uh, at least on an oval. Obviously, on a, on a road course, you would want to do that. So for the purposes of our tire pressures, it's not gonna make a whole lot of difference, but if you have any doubt whatsoever, run them a little bit higher and you should get a little bit more speed there. Just understand that you may be sacrificing a little bit of stability to get that extra speed. So for now, I'm gonna run these back down to where they were. So we got 34 pounds in the right front and now back to 31 and a half in the right rear. But let's move over and look at camber. Now, for these purposes, you can see that 10 degrees is the maximum, positive or negative. So in the left front tire, we're obviously going to want to run positive camber because that leans the tire out and toward the left, which is the direction we're going on an oval. So I can move this down as far as I want to, but now you've had a chance to see the lap times we were running with using the max on both. So let's run this down and see if it makes a whole lot of difference. In this particular case, I'm gonna run this down by half. Okay, that's the only thing we're gonna change. We're gonna head out on the track again and do our extremely intelligent thing and run straight to the straight on the track instead of riding the apron around. So in your mind, you're probably thinking that, you know, this is a pretty radical change to the camber. I mean, I know in real life, this would be a, well, nobody would ever want to change camber by this much, but it would be a huge, huge change in real life to change this. So what I'm going to expect to feel is a car that's tighter because now what should happen is I should have given my front tires a lot less grip. Because this game, from what I've noticed, seems to give, continue to give you grip and uh, turning power all the way up through the maximum camber. So our lap time here should suffer, but it should make the car feel a good bit more stable So if that's something you're looking for is stability in your car, then getting rid of a little bit of camber out of one or both of the front tires can do that for you. Now, I would also expect it to slow the car down. But as I expected, the car is definitely more stable. Again, not that it was unstable before, but again, I could drive this setup all day long. I don't feel like the car is ever gonna break free or I'm going to lose control of it. I'm basically just 
out on a Sunday drive. Okay. But you notice right there, I kept my same driving style and kept driving the car in hard, but you can see it washed straight up the track and we got into the wall. So there's the less grip. Let's continue running another lap or so and let's see if that continues. Maybe it was just a one-time thing. Maybe I drove it in even harder than I'm used to driving it in and that's what did it. So we'll, so here I'm gonna try to get to the bottom and I was unable to. So, and then you can see on corner exit, car is drifting higher and higher up toward the wall. So instantly I know that if I were gonna run this type of setup in a race, then I'm gonna have to adjust my driving style to suit it because there's not as much grip in the front tires now as there was previously. You can see the car is gonna go straight up to the wall. So it's gonna make it a lot harder for me to run the higher groove unless I adjust my driving by, for the most part, simply lifting earlier off the gas. And of course, I would expect to be slower at the same time. And of course, the lap times, even though those aren't uh, clearly indicative because of the AI interference, you can see that those lap times are, in general are slower. So what did we learn in this particular uh, session? We learned that it seems that the game continues to reward you with additional grip the higher you go on the camber. More positive camber on the left front, more negative camber on the right front seems to yield more grip. And on tire pressures, in general, lower pressures will give you more stability, but higher pressures will, in general, seem to give you a little bit of extra speed, maybe a tenth or so. Now, I have you know, my suspicions are that if you worked around with the setup enough to accommodate for higher or lower pressures, you could probably get that speed back. But in general, all things being equal in the setup, the lower pressures will give you a feeling of more stability and probably cost you a tenth or so, while the higher pressures will give you higher temperatures on the track and maybe a little bit of extra speed. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Feel free to leave any comments or concerns you have in the comment section below. And stay tuned for more NASCAR Heat Evolution videos on Nipig Gaming.